In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use my custom tower defense kit. And before we get started, I'm just going to say this is actually quite hard to do. So if you don't already know your way around Roblox Studio, then you might not be able to do this one. So the first thing that you want to do is click the link in the description to this page. And as you can see right here, there's three dots in the top right corner. You want to click on them and click edit in studio. And if you don't have Roblox Studio, make sure to download it. Okay, so once Roblox Studio has opened, you want to go into the top left, click file, publish to Roblox Studio, and you can name it anything that you want. And then once you named it, you just click create. And usually with my kits, you'll be finished here, but you have to do one extra step, which is add the second game. So what you want to do is go to view and then click this button right here to open asset manager. And once it's open, you want to double click on places, right click and click add new place. And then you can rename this to anything you want as well. And before you close this, you want to go to view and open up explorer. Then go to server script service, open lobby controller. And you can see on line five, it has the target place ID. So you want to go into asset manager, places and copy the ID of the place that you just made and paste it right here. And once you've done that, you want to publish it to Roblox again. And then you can close this place, open the second link in the description, click on the three dots in the top right corner and click edit in studio. And once this is open, you want to go to file, publish to Roblox, and then you want to go to update existing game and click on the game that you just made. And you can see there'll be two places. So you want to set it to the second one that you named and click overwrite. And when this pops up, you have to click publish without permissions because uh, I don't think I can share them, but yeah. And for the final thing, you wanna to go to view and open explorer and then go to server script service, open server handler. And you can see on line 16, it has the place ID. So you want to open asset manager again, which is in view right here, go to places and copy the first places place ID and paste it right here. And then you wanna publish it to studio again. And now you can close the place and see if it actually worked. So as you can see, I have the game right here and we'll see if it works. And as you can see, when I load into the game, all of the UI works straight away. Let's go to this and you can see like unequipping works, equipping. And as you can see, there's not actually bag trading or shop, but I might make that in a separate version of this. And as you can see, if you go over here, you can roll on the banner and see what you get. And as you can see, I just got the mythical first try, which is pretty cool. But yeah, let's see if loading into the game actually works. So yeah, everything's working fine, but you might've realized it looks a bit weird because nothing has any animations. So basically Roblox doesn't allow me to share my animations with you. So you're gonna have to create your own and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so before we create the animations, I'm just gonna show you where everything is. So you can see in the main game in replicated storage, there's enemies, maps, remotes, stats modules, and towers. Okay, so I'm just gonna explain what all of these are. So as you can see, I'm in the lobby and you won't need to use effects, enemies, and for maps, all you have to do is create a folder with the map name. You don't actually have to put the parts inside of it. But next is remotes, which you don't need that. And then the stats module, which this basically controls like everything that goes on in the game. So the only thing that you'll be needing from this is towers module. So as you can see, if you scroll down and you click before this bracket, you can see it goes down to here. So all of this is for one tower. And since this is the first one, it has the ID of one. And all of these are customizable. So you can set the name to anything. The tower type one is attack, tower type two is farms. You can set the rarity, which these are the rarities right here. So number one is rare, number two, very rare. Then it has max placement, tower stats, which includes the cost, cooldown, damage, and range of it. But this is just the first upgrade. So if you wanna add a second upgrade, you copy and then paste and set the number one to two. And you can change all of those stats. And for animations, you can see level one has an idle animation and an attack animation. And you can copy this and paste it and set the one to two if you're gonna actually make an upgrade for it. And in this version of the game, you don't have to worry about evolution. But yeah, make sure you keep this open because we're gonna be adding a tower. Anyways, the next folder is towers. So as you can see, this holds all of the tower models in the game. So I'll go to bubbles and as you can see, it doesn't actually have an upgrade. So we'll take that out and put it in workspace and you can see the models right here. And yeah, it's basically just an R15 model, but there's actually a specific reason why its name is one. So if you want to create an upgrade for a tower, you have to make a separate one and then name it number two. So this will be the second upgrade of the tower and you can customize it all that you want, or you can just leave it the same. Either way, it will work as an upgrade. Okay. So now we'll go over how to actually add a tower. So I'll set the name to placeholder and it's too big. So you want to go to scale, set it to 0.51 and that's the size that I use. So, and then you can customize it all you want. And once you're finished customizing it, you want to create that animation. So hover over your tower, click the plus and add an animation to it. Then you want to name it idle and create an idle animation for it. So once you've finished your animation, you want to click the three dots here, publish to Roblox, save, and then copy this ID, cross that off and 
click on the animation that you just made. So I made idle, so I'm gonna click on it, click on animation ID and control V, enter. Next, you wanna create a folder in Workspace. Name it the name of your tower. So mine's called placeholder and I'm gonna place my placeholder in there. And since it only has one level, I'm gonna rename this to one. But if it had two levels, I would have two of them and name the second one two. And you can also add as many levels as you want. Next, you wanna open replicator storage and then place placeholder in towers. And you wanna keep it open like this. But you also wanna scroll up to stat modules and open the towers module from before. And you wanna scroll all the way down to the bottom and copy from line 373 to line 392 and then paste it below. Then you wanna scroll down to your tower and copy the name of it and paste it into tower name. Then set the tower type, which mine's an attack tower and my rarity will be one as well. And I'll just leave the rest of the stats the same. But what you have to do is use the idle animation. So you wanna to go to the idle, copy the animation ID that you put in there and paste it into where it says idle. So now that we've done all this, we wanna publish this to Roblox and then go to the second version of the game. And once the second place is open, you wanna go back to the first and copy the tower that you just made, go into replicated storage towers and then paste it into there. Now you wanna go back to your other game into the towers module and copy the lines of code that you just made. And then go to the second game and go to replicated storage, stat modules, and then tower module and scroll down to the end and paste it there. Okay, so the next thing that you wanna do is go into replicated storage and we're gonna be making the move for it because a tower needs a move for it to actually work in the game. So you'll see tower moves right here, you just wanna open that. And if you go down to line 355, you can see it has sin. And you just wanna select from here to here and copy that and then scroll down to line 436 and paste it after that. And then all you wanna do is click enter, add one of the brackets and click comma. Then you'll see the names actually underlined. So you wanna set this to the name of your tower. And now we're getting into the actual move. So right here you have move number one. So this is the move for the first level of the tower. And you can see it has a function for the server which gives the player, the tower, and the enemy that they're gonna attack. And you can just use the function that I made called AOE attack. And you can see this is all of the things that you have to add to the function. And that's what everything does. So anyways, I'm just gonna leave it the same. And as you can see right here, the client attack. So this is just for all of the visual effects. So I'm gonna remove the sin attack because I don't want it to be the same as the other tower. So let's say I want it to tween up and then to the enemy. What I'll do is tween the tower up and then tween it to the enemy that they have to attack, which is really simple. But if you don't know how to code in effects, then you might have to ask someone else to do it for you. And let's say you had a second version of the tower, you'll copy this move and paste it on the next line and name it number two. And you can change the AOE attack to something else and change the effects as much as you want. Anyways, so that's how you add your own tower and customize their moves. So now we're moving on to actually adding the map. So I'm gonna use one of my other maps to show how it works. So for the maps, all you need is can't place, can place, map health and path points. So as you can see, I highlighted can't place and this is what it looks like, but I'll go to can place and this is where they can place. So basically how this works is when you're placing a tower, if it's touching can place, it can place, but if it's touching can place and can't place, then it can't. Anyways, next is the path points. So what you wanna do is name them in this order. So number one is the start of it and it goes up in number for each position. And you can have as many path points as you want. Just make sure that you name them correctly and put them in the folder. Anyways, now you can see map health. And that's basically just the amount of damage it can take before they fail this map. And also, once you've finished creating your map, you want to put it in maps in replicated storage. And you also want to copy the folder into the main game so that it shows up in the lobby. Anyways, now that you have your maps, it's time to do the enemies. So what you want to do is get your enemy model. And I'm just going to use a basic rig. And you want to shrink this down to any size that you want. I usually do 0.6. Then you want to go into it and delete the animate and create a folder named animations and then create an animation in there and name that walk. Then create a walkie animation for it and paste it into here. And once you've done that, place it in the enemies folder in replicated storage. So now you have a new map and a new zombie in your game, but you don't have any waves for them. So what you have to do to create waves is go to the wave module in replicated storage, open that and then scroll down to line 62. And then what you want to do is copy this testing one and paste it on line 63 and replace the name right here with the name of your map and you can delete wave 2 and 3 for now and basically this is the number of the waves so this is wave 1 this is wave 2 and this is wave 3 and we're going to delete wave 2 and 3 for now but as you can see in wave 1 you have the enemy name the amount to spawn health speed and weight between spawns so yeah basically you have to set enemy name to the name of your enemy that you just created and i'm going to change spawn amount to 2 health 
to 10, speed to 1.2 and weight between spawns to 2.2. And then I'm also going to use another enemy that I made before. So I'll copy this line and paste it onto the next line and then put in grass zombie. And I'm going to leave the rest of the stats the same. So this is what it looks like to have one wave, but you can just copy and paste this as many times as you want and make wave two, three, four, and customize them around as much as you want. So that's basically everything, but you can see all the billboard UIs in here. You can see all the effects and everything, and all of the GUIs are in starter GUIs, so you can customize this as much as you want. Just make sure you don't change any of the names. Anyways, that's it.